Welcome to ITTV for Form 5 Physics. The title of this lesson, Electric Current and Potential Difference. In this lesson, we're entering into a new chapter, which is the chapter on electricity. In this chapter, we have to look at several different aspects of electricity. One, we want to look at electric charges. We want to look at what is the electric current and what potential difference or voltage means. We want to have a look at Ohm's law, series circuits, parallel circuits. We want to try to understand what causes internal resistance inside batteries or dry cells. And then we finally want to have a look at power and efficiency of electrical devices. Let's get right into it. Electricity. Electricity is transmitted using high tension cable wire. Uses of electricity. Cities are lighted up using electricity. Imagine living in a world without electricity. We will not have electric lights, motors, x-ray machines or even the transport system. Electricity in transport system. Many countries are using electricity to run their buses. The diagram or the picture shows a train using electricity to run its engine in Kuala Lumpur. Electric charge. Plastic ruler is rubbed with a cloth. The ruler is brought near some small pieces of paper. Now, this is an experiment that you did in your lower secondary. What you did was, you rubbed the plastic ruler with a cloth. The plastic ruler would get a charge. And when you brought the plastic ruler near some small pieces of paper, what would happen is, the plastic ruler would attract these small pieces of paper. And it demonstrated to us that, if you rub some insulating material like plastic, it can get a static electric charge. The charge can either be positive or negative. And a charged object can attract other objects by inducing a positive or negative charge in those objects. Now, these charges are the basic units or the basic blocks of our electricity. If you rubbed a plastic ruler with a piece of cloth as shown in figure A, the ruler would likely become charged. When the charged ruler is brought near some small paper bits on a table as shown in figure B, the charged ruler is able to raise the paper bits off the table and thereby demonstrating that a charge has been produced. Now, any objects that are within the area where the charge has an influence will be affected by the charge. The area where the charge has an influence is called the electric field. Electric field. Electric field lines near a single positive charge and negative charge region of space around a charged object when a charged object enters this electric field. The field exerts a force on the second charged object. You need to be able to visualize the electric field by drawing a series of lines to indicate the direction of the field. So what we need to be able to do here is be able to imagine these point charges or a plate with charge and how the magnetic I beg your pardon how the electric field lines radiate from these point charges or plates that have a charge let's go up to the board and draw these out so that we can understand more clearly the influence of a positive and a negative electric charge we'll start off with a positive charge a point charge. If I have a point positive charge like so, I will have electric field lines radiating out of it to infinity. 
So the lines radiate out. Going to infinity. Like so. Now, if I had a negative charge, this is a point negative charge, I would get electric field lines coming in from infinity. So I would get lines that were coming in like so. So our field lines move out or radiate out from a positive point charge and radiate inwards to a point negative charge. Now if you had a plate that had a charge, this would be slightly different because you would have more field lines radiating from a plate. So if you had a positive plate, like so, your field lines would radiate out of the field like so. And if you had a negative plate, your field lines would be coming into the plate. Like so. So remember the key things here, that the electric field lines direction is one of leaving or going away from a positive charge, such as you see up here, or going towards a negative charge, as you would see in the two diagrams below. An electric field is said to exist in the region of space around a charged object. So when we talk about this region of space, we're talking about the area around the charged object. Obviously, the closer we are to the object, the lines will be closer, therefore your electric field will be stronger. So the area just around the charge, your lines are closer, stronger field. Once you go a bit further away, let's say about here, you'll notice that the lines are further apart, which means that the strength of the field is diminishing. So strength of field diminishes as we move away from our charged object. When another charged object enters this electric field, the field exerts a force on the second charged object. Electric field lines always extend from a positively charged object to a negatively charged object. From a positively charged object to infinity or from infinity to a negatively charged object. So, what we've drawn are just positives or negatives. If we had two of different types of charged objects near each other, the field would radiate from positive to negative. Let's sketch this. And let's sketch this using two point charges. Let's say I have a point charge here that is positive and a point charge here that is negative. What I would find is the field would move from positive to negative. So the line would go like so. And on the back area, they would radiate out, make a full loop and radiate back in over here. Like so. So our lines go from positive to negative. Electric field lines never cross each other. Electric field lines are most dense around objects with the greatest amount of charge. So, a quick summary. Electric field lines always extend from a positively charged object to a negatively charged object, from a positively charged object to infinity, or from infinity to a negatively charged object. Electric field lines never cross each other. And electric field lines are most dense around objects with the greatest amount of charge. Electric current. Electricity is made up of tiny electrical charges called electrons. 
Static electricity is a build-up of these tiny electrical charges in one place until the electrical charge is discharged. So, electric current, what is it? Well, electric current is basically the flow of electrons, which we call charges. If the charges build up in one area, we call that static electricity. Static meaning not moving or non-changing. So, if you take an insulating object, like we took with the ruler earlier, and we rubbed it with a cloth, and the ruler gets a charge, well, we call that charge static electrical charge because the charge cannot flow in the ruler because the ruler is an insulator. But with metal objects such as copper wires or iron, what you're going to get is the charge can flow because they are conductors of electricity. So in these cases, the electrons will move and when they move, we get electrical current. Electricity is a flow of the electrons in a conductor. Electric current, I, is defined as the rate of charge, Q, flow. We get the formula I equals Q over T. So let's put this formula up on the board. We have a formula that says I equals Q over T where I is your current, Q is your charge, and T is your time. Like so. The symbols that we have are, for current, we use ampere. For charge, we use the symbol C for coulomb and time, seconds as usual. So, current is basically coulomb per second, C, S negative 1, or ampere. In the photograph, you can see a dam. Potential energy of water in a reservoir at a higher ground is converted to electrical energy using dynamos in a hydroelectric power station. When that electrical energy is produced, it's produced because electrons are flowing through the conducting wire in the generator. Potential difference. Electrons will flow from a point which has a higher electrical potential to a point which has a lower electrical potential. The difference in electrical potential between the two points is called the potential difference. Now, the easy way to understand potential difference is by the simple analogy of potential energy. Now, if I moved over here and picked up one of these magnets, now, if I hold the magnet up here, because of the height, we know that this magnet has high potential energy. Now, if I drop this magnet, it will go from high potential energy to low potential energy which is very similar to electricity. Electricity will flow from higher potential difference to an area of lower potential difference. Not much work is needed to actually make these electrons move because, such as with this dropping, it's very similar to gravity just pulling these electrons along from high potential to low potential. The potential difference between two points in a circuit is defined as the amount of work done, W, or energy converted to another form such as light or heat when one coulomb of charge passes from one point to another point. So potential difference is the work done divided by the quantity of charge. We get the formula V equals W over Q. So let's put that up on the board. So for potential difference, we have the formula V equals W over Q, where V is your potential difference, which we'll write down as PD. W is your work or energy. 
done when moving a single charge between two points. Remember Q once again is your charge. So V equals W over Q. The unit for potential difference is the volt. Remember work? Well, we're looking in the land of Joule here because it's an energy and charge is once again Coulomb. So your potential difference is Joule per Coulomb. JC negative one or we use volts. Unit of potential difference. The SI unit for potential difference, sometimes called voltage, is volt, V. The potential difference across two points is one volt if one joule of electrical energy is transferred per one coulomb of charge passing between the two points. In the photograph, you see an electric eel. An electric eel, the potential difference between the head and tail can be up to 600 volts. Let's try some exercises. In the diagram, you can see two bulbs connected in series to four dry cells. Four dry cells, total six volts, are connected to two bulbs of 2.5 volt and 3.5 volt in a series circuit. What is the meaning of 6 volt voltage supply? So, what is the meaning of 6 volt voltage supply? So, what does those 6 volts mean? Well, what I'm asking you to do is to break down 6 volts into work per charge. So, how many joules of energy are we transferring to every charge? Let's say that we have one coulomb of charge. So, if we have one coulomb of charge, this would mean that for six volts, we would be transferring how many joules to each coulomb? If you worked it out, let's have a look at the answer. A voltage of six volts means there are six joules of energy given to each coulomb of charge. Let's try another question. We have the same setup, four dry cells, total six volts are connected to two bulbs, 2.5 volt and 3.5 volt in the series circuit as you see in the figure. Explain the value of 2.5 volt and 3.5 volt in bulbs M and N. So now we've got six volts. Let's sketch this up here, okay? We've got a six volt supply coming out from here. I'm not going to draw all four batteries. Let's just understand we have six volts. And we're transferring these six volts to one bulb, which is a 2.5 volt bulb, and another bulb that is a 3.5 volt bulb. Now, the, what we want to understand is what these voltages mean. Now, the voltages basically are going to mean how much energy is needed in each bulb to move one coulomb of charge through the bulb, from the point before the bulb to the point after the bulb. So if you had a 2.5 volt bulb, it would require 2.5 joules of energy per charge. So out of the six joules that is available, because it's six volts, 2.5 joules would be used here, and the other 3.5 joules would be used here to move the charge through the bulbs. Now, I need you to write this out so that you get an idea. So just write down how many joules are needed per bulb. Have you done this? Let's have a look at the answer. Answer. 2.5 joules of the 6 joules electrical energy will be used and is converted to heat and light by the bulb M when one coulomb of charge passes through the bulb. 3.5 joules of electrical energy is converted to heat and light in bulb N when one coulomb of charge passes through the bulb. So remember, as the voltage goes through, what these values mean is if you have a 2.5 volt battery, it means it's going to use 
2.5 joules of electrical energy which will change into light and heat energy. The same works on this side. If you have 3.5 volts, it means 3.5 joules is going to change into heat and light. Let's try another question. The voltage in a car battery is 12 volts. Explain what is meant by 12 volts. Look, we've done a similar question already. I asked you what is meant by 6 volts earlier. So, what does 12 volt mean? Write out the answer. Have you done it? Let's have a look. The answer means there will be 12 joules of electrical energy supply to the electrical component of the car when one coulomb of charge passes through it. So when the one coulomb goes through the battery, 12 joules of electrical energy are passed into the battery to be changed into whatever energies we need. Let's try another question. If a charge of 5 coulomb flows through a bulb and the amount of electrical energy converted into heat is 20 joule, calculate the potential difference across the bulb. So here we want to use this formula up here. We know that the work, as we've said, is 20 joules or the energy conversion here is 20 joules. We know that the charge was 5 coulomb so if you substitute these values into the formula 20 divided by 5 what would your answer be? Have you done it? Let's have a look. So we were given that the charge was 5 coulomb and the energy was 20 joule. So your potential difference would be 20 divided by 5 which equals 4 volts. Let's do a quick summary. Remember the definition of electric current and potential difference. Easy ways to remember these are to remember the formula. If you remember the formula I equals Q over T, then you know that the current is the rate of charge flow per unit time. If you know that voltage is W over Q, then you know it is the work done to move one coulomb of charge between two points. So by having these formulas in your mind, you can easily redefine or write out the definition for current or potential difference. Remember the electric field charge and the direction of the electric field lines for positive and negative charges. So remember what we were talking about earlier that the field radiates from a point positive charge to infinity or from infinity to a point negative charge. Remember how the charge lines look if you have plates of charge. And finally remember that the charge lines, electric field lines I should say, sorry, move from positive to the negative. Remember how to draw these field lines. Remember the field lines can never touch each other. And also remember that where the charge is strongest, the number of lines will be at its highest or most dense. That's all the time we have for this lesson. Thank you for watching ITTV.